Hey, North Point, thank you so much for joining us online today as we are kicking off a brand new series of messages for the summertime, simply entitled Jesus. That's what we are going to spend our summer talking about. We are going to be focused on the life of Jesus. And we're not just going to be talking about the story of Jesus. We're also going to be getting a greater understanding of the spirit of Jesus. We're, we're not just talking about who Jesus was. We're not just talking about what Jesus did but how Jesus lived and how he showed us how to live. And here's something else that we're doing this summer that we're pretty excited about. It As a community, we're gonna be reading through uh, Max Lucado's book entitled Jesus, The God Who Knows Your Name. Um, I can promise you this book, man, this tells you about who Jesus is. Uh, this tells you uh, about how you can develop a personal relationship with him. This book is amazing. Whether you're just coming into faith or you've been walking <laughs> with God for 40 years, uh, this is an amazing book, a great read. You can purchase it wherever you get your books from. We, we will also have some copies here will be selling in person on campus. So I hope you get this book and read along with us. Uh, you know, the, the truth is, is that we experience salvation through the finished work of Jesus, but we experience transformation through following the way of Jesus. Let me say that for you again. We experience salvation, our eternity through the finished work of Jesus. The work is already complete. Jesus hanging on the cross cried out, it is finished. The work is done. That is how we experience salvation, what God did for us. But the way we experience transformation is when we begin to walk in the way of Jesus, when we begin to think like Jesus thought, when we begin to behave the way Jesus behaved, when we begin to react and respond the way that Jesus reacted and responded, that's how our life is transformed. And as Jesus followers, what we believe is that the Spirit of Christ is living on the inside of us. So in other words, what we see in him should be seen in us. What we see in him should be seen in us. Let's go to the book of Romans chapter eight, the apostle Paul writing here in verse 11, this is what he says, the spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. Come on, not only is God personal with us, he's living in us, but God is powerful on the inside of us. And just as God raised Jesus from the dead, he will give life to your mortal bodies by the same spirit living within you. Therefore, dear brothers and sisters, you have no obligation to do what your sinful nature urges you to do. I want to stop right there and say, because Jesus broke the power of sin off of your life, you don't have to obey the temptation of sin in your life. No, God has, made, God has made it clear and he has made it plain that sin does not have control over you anymore. Verse 13 says, for if you live by its dictates, that, that sinful nature, you will die. But if through the power of the Spirit you put to death the deeds of your sinful nature, you will live. He says, if, if you don't put this, if you, if you don't do something with this old sinful nature, then you are going to die. You are going to live separated from the life that God really wants you to live. But he says, but if through the power of the Spirit you will put to death those sinful habits and those, those sinful behaviors, if you will put those things to death, then you will live. And you would have to say, well, then we'll live what? We will live eternally and abundantly. We will receive the eternal life that God has for us, but we will also live the abundant life that God created us to live here on this earth. So, so what happens is, is that we use the power. We use the power of the Spirit 
to change our thoughts and our behaviors. We use the power of the Holy Spirit to produce something different on the inside of us. So what we do is we pull the power of the Spirit to change the pattern of our life. We use the power of the Spirit to begin to change the pattern of our thinking, the pattern of our behavior, the pattern of our habits. We let the power of the Holy Spirit begin to change and transform our lives and to begin to produce something brand new on the inside of us. And you might say, well, what, what is that that you're trying to produce? What, what new thing is that? Well, the Apostle Paul actually writes about it in Galatians, the, the same one who was writing in Romans and, and said that you don't have to live the way that you've always lived. The Holy Spirit will come in and help you, give you the power to lead you into life. Now in Galatians chapter five, this is what it says in the Amplified Translation. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit, the result of his presence within us. Come on, can we just stop right there and be reminded once again that the presence of God is on the inside of us. He says, now the fruit of the Spirit is the result, is the result of the presence of God that is living and dwelling on the inside of us. I love the way that the, the New Living Translation says, it says that the Holy Spirit will produce this kind of fruit in us. And so what is this? What is the result of the presence? What is the Holy Spirit producing? He goes on and listen. He says he's going to produce love and unselfish concern for others, joy, inner peace, patience, not the ability to wait, but how we act while waiting, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The Apostle Paul lists nine very clear, and can we just be honest, very challenging behaviors that should be present in our everyday lives. Because these behaviors are produced by the Spirit that is on the inside of us. And it is that same Spirit that was present and active in the life of Jesus. And when we look at the life of Jesus, we see, we see the fruit in its fullness. I mean, we see the fullness of love, the fullness of joy, the fullness of peace. And this is where we're going in these nine weeks. We're going to dive in and see the fullness of all of these behaviors lived out in the life of Jesus. And all of these behaviors that we're going to be speaking about, these nine behaviors that Paul writes about, all these behaviors should be evident in every Jesus follower's life. Why? Because they were evident in the life of Jesus. And if we are his disciples, if we are his followers, if we are following in his way, then these should be evident in our lives as well. Now, uh, certainly our personality and the home that we were raised in, it, it might cause some of these elements of the fruit of the Spirit to be a little bit more mature or a little bit more evident or uh, uh, a little bit more pronounced in our lives, but all of them should be present and all of them should be growing. You see, if you were raised in a a, a very structured home, a very disciplined house where consistency was valued, then maybe maybe uh, faithfulness and self-control, those might be a little bit easier for you. Or if naturally you, you were just born a very optimistic, happy, sunshine type person, then maybe joy and kindness is going to be a little bit easier for you. But here's what I want you to, to, to know and to take away, and that is this, that even if you were not born in a house like that, even if you don't naturally have certain things, we do not have an excuse. And here's the reason why we do not have an excuse not to produce the fullness of the fruit of the Spirit. That is because we have all been born 
again, and we have all been adopted into a brand new family. That's right. So if you weren't born with it naturally, hey, you have been born again, a supernatural birth. And if it didn't happen in your family, that's okay, because you just stepped into a whole nother family family when you came into the family of God. And what that means for every single one of us is that the abundant life really is possible. The abundant life is possible. The abundant life is going to be found in evident fruit. And the fruit is made possible because it's, it doesn't depend on the family that I was raised in. It doesn't depend on my DNA. No, friends, I have been born again. I have stepped into the family of God. And because of that, all things have become possible for me. I mean, just look at what Jesus told his disciples, all of these disciples from different homes and from different backgrounds and had faced different trauma in their childhoods, all of them different personalities and preferences. And this is what Jesus says in John 15. He says, abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, it is he that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers, and the branches are gathered and thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. How did you see that? Jesus says, abide in me. I will abide in you and you will produce much fruit. And he says, and this is going to bring glory to the Father and it's going to prove that you really are my disciples. You know, that word abide, uh, that's not a word that, that we use a whole lot in uh, our everyday language. Uh, but the word abide, it simply means to remain, continue, or stay. It means to continue in a particular condition, attitude, relationship, or last. It just means to keep on keeping on. It just means to keep on showing up, to keep on plugging in. It means to keep on connecting our hearts. That's what it really means, that we would simply remain in relationship, that we would remain and continue, and that we would stay true and stay faithful. And I believe that one of the reasons that we struggle with producing fruit is because we're not good at abiding. We're not good at abiding. As a society, we're not good at abiding. As, a, as a, a nation, we're not really good at abiding. So many things now are moving so fast and, and with technology and all the things that are changing, we, we can really struggle at abiding. And there's the reason why, because we don't really practice it. We don't practice it in our everyday life. So then when it comes to our spiritual life, we're not really good at it. But I want you to notice something. I want you to notice the guarantee for abiding is fruitfulness. There is a guarantee. There is a promise of abiding, and it is fruitfulness. Because here's the truth. You cannot abide in Christ and not become more like Christ. You cannot remain in him and not become like him. You cannot stay connected to him and not be transformed by him. So the guarantee of abiding is transformation. The guarantee of abiding is fruitfulness in our lives. So it takes us to the question, then Philip, why don't more people do it? Because abiding is hard work. 
Abiding is hard work. You know, abiding, it, it sounds like a simple, passive word, but it's not. Oh, friends, do not make that mistake. No, abiding is active. I, I know abiding sounds like resting, but it's actually more like resisting. I know it sounds like resting, but it's actually more like resisting. You know, I, I don't know if you've ever been to one of those big water parks, but in some of the big water parks, they have this thing called the Lazy River. And in this Lazy River, there is a current system uh, that begins to move that water, and it creates like this flow effect. And you can, you can get into that river, and it will just float you all around. People get on big rafts and different things, and you can just float all the way around that water park in that Lazy River. And if you got in that river and I told you, hey, I want you to remain in this spot, you see, it would be possible for you to remain. It would be possible for you to abide right there. But the thing that you would have to do is that you would have to resist the current. And, and not only would you have to resist the current, you've got people coming in that current. You got, you got people on floats and people on rafts and people just kind of bobbing along. And you're going to have to not just resist the current, but you're also going to have to resist the obstacles and the people that are coming down that river. And you see, today, our society has created a current. There is a current in society. There is a custom that is out there in the world. There is patterns and practices out there in the world. The world has created this flow. It has created this current. And not only does it exist in the world, you have created your own current from your past, past behaviors, past habits. You have created the own current for your life. So if you are going to remain in Christ, you are going to have to resist the pull of the currents around you. If you are going to abide and remain in him, you are going to have to resist the temptation and resist the currents that are around you. And here's the thing is the enemy is always just trying to get you to float. The enemy is just trying to get you to float. Ah, oh, look, everybody else is doing it. The, the, the enemy is trying to get you to flight. Ah, oh, nothing's nothing really bad is going to happen. Oh, the enemy's always just trying to get you to stop remaining and abiding and just float with the current of the world, to just float with the standard of the community, to just float with those around you. That's what the enemy is trying to get you to do. But I want you to know that while the enemy is trying to convince you to float, the Holy Spirit is equipping you to fight. While the enemy is trying to get you to float, the Holy Spirit is equipping you to fight because he knows that you can't abide without fighting. He knows that you cannot remain without resisting. You have to abide if you want abundance. You have to abide if you want abundance. You have got to remain if you want the life that God created you to live. And I want you to see that abundance is tied to action. That's what abiding is. Abiding is action. Abiding is fighting. Abiding is resisting. Ab abiding is doing the work. Abiding is action. And if we are going to produce the fruit that we need to produce in our lives, it is going to start with us abiding. Now, let me just give you a few quick reminders as we bring our talk to a close today. The first reminder that I want to give you is that following Jesus is not about behavior modification, it's about life transformation. Following Jesus is not about behavior modification, it is about heart and mind and life transformation. Maybe we could even take it a step further and say following Jesus is not about a behavior modification plan, but it's about a life transformation promise. Because it is a promise that Jesus has made that when you follow him and you abide in him, you will become like him, bearing the fruit that he bore while he was here on this earth. 
Now, you know that 2021, this is our year of application. And so this year, what we are doing is we are taking action. We are taking the action of putting things into operation in our lives. And, and over the next several weeks, we're going to be diving into these nine behaviors, these nine characteristics of Jesus. And we're going to be talking about how do we put these characteristics in our lives? How do we love like Jesus loved? How do we have the type of peace that Jesus had? How do we live in that kindness and gentleness that Jesus lived in? We're going to go there in the next nine weeks. But I want you to hear me clearly this morning. Before we start trying to copy him, we better make sure that we are connected to him. Before we start trying to copy his behaviors and copy his characteristics and copy his love and his joy and his peace, we better first make sure that we are connected to him. Because attempting to produce the fruit of the Spirit without abiding in the power of the Spirit will turn out to be a fruitless effort. If we try to do it on our own, if we try to do it in our own strength and in our own wisdom, if we try to do it in our own way, if we simply try to make it happen in our lives, it will be a fruitless effort because we need the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit to produce in us what Jesus told us was possible in our lives. You see, if this summer we want it to be a fruitful summer, if, if we want this summer to be fruitful, then we cannot just settle for believing in Jesus. We need to be daily living in Jesus. It's not just enough for us to be theologically in Christ. No, we need to be practically with Christ. <laughs> it's not enough for us to know, okay, I'm saved, I'm in the family of God, I've been born again, now I am found in Christ and, and, and I know that, that I'm going to go to heaven one day. You see, if we want this summer really to be fruitful, we've got to plug into the vine. We've got to connect with Jesus. You see, it's not enough for us just to have a confession about Christ. No, we need a real powerful connection with Christ because so many times we have a confession but without the connection, we get disappointed because we're not seeing the fruit. We're not seeing the change. We're not seeing the transformation. We're not seeing the guarantee. We're not seeing the promises. We're not seeing what we thought we would see, what Jesus even told us we could have. And then it turns into frustration. And we say, but I have the right confession about who Jesus is. I believe that he's the son of God. I have a confession uh, that I'm gonna spend eternity with him. Yes, but the confession is not not enough for fruitfulness. You got to have a connection. You, 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 you can't just get connected in a prayer one time 10 years ago. No, you've got to be connected every single day. And Jesus gave us a promise. And he says, if you will abide, and if you will continue to abide, and if you will remain, and if there's something lasting in you, and if you, if you don't disconnect, if you will stay connected, then you will produce much fruit. It's not a chance, it's not a maybe, it's not playing the lottery. Jesus said, if you will find yourself in me and you will abide there, you will produce fruit. Let me just give you three simple ways as we bring everything to a close today. Three simple ways for you to connect with Jesus every day. Three simple ways. Uh, the, the first thing that you can do is through prayer and praise. Prayer and praise. Through prayer and praise, you can connect with Jesus. Now listen, do not overcomplicate this. Prayer and praise, it's just being aware of God's presence. It's just being aware that you serve a God who is personal and a God who is powerful. It's just telling God thank you for his goodness in your life. It's just that moment of connecting with him, sharing your heart and your feelings and, and asking God to do what only he can do in your life. Don't overcomplicate it. 
And, and the great thing about prayer and praise is that one normally leads to another. If you want to start with praise and gratitude and thanking God, you're going to end up praying, asking God to do things for you. If you want to start with prayer and you're going to pray and you're going to be praying, then guess what? As you pray, guess what? There's going to be a moment of praise because as you're praying, asking God to do something, you're going to remember what God has done and then it's going to turn into a moment of praise. It, it's, just a, it's just a way to connect, prayer and praise. Here's the second way that you can connect with Jesus every single day, and that is a Bible and a book. A Bible and a book. You can open up your word. I hope you are reading along with us in our Bible reading plan. We're going all the way through the New Testament this year, one chapter a day, three to five minutes a day, and we're reading through the whole New Testament. And you can start right where you are today. You can download that, and, and I encourage you to do that. But then there's also a book. You could get this book and you could begin to read along with us this summer. But it's just a Bible and a book. It's just learning about Jesus. It's just seeing Jesus in a way that you've never seen. It's about intentionally connecting with the word of God and the principles of God. It's a way of connecting with him. Once again, don't overcomplicate it. Ah, oh, but Philip, I don't understand everything. Well, guess what? Neither do I. <laughs> I don't understand it at all, all, all either. But but I, I keep reading. I keep reading. Don't overcomplicate it. Just do it. Bible in a book. It's an easy way to connect with Jesus every single day. And then the last way you can connect with Jesus, and that's, that's to join and juke. Join and juke. Now, you're saying, what in the world? What are we talking about? I'm talking about you've got to join with others who have a desire to connect with God. You've got to join with other people who want to be fruitful, who want to produce in their life what you want to produce in your life. And then you know what you also got to do? You also got to put that juke. You got to put that juke on those people who are not interested in producing that. They are not interested in being fruitful. They're more interested in blaming and complaining. They are more interested in negativity and sarcasm. They are more interested in living in their past than they are looking to their future. And you got to put a juke on those people because those people are part of that current that's trying to pull you back into an old lifestyle, pull you back into old habits. But no, you are remaining and you are abiding, and the way that you can do that is you can link up with other people. Just the way I, I said, if we put you in the lazy river, you could withstand the current, but how much more if you linked arms with three or four or five people and you got in that lazy river and as the current was coming, you locked and anchored one another in. Oh, man. You see, that's what happens when you connect with other people who want what you want, that are kingdom-minded, that are Jesus followers. They are disciples of Christ. You got to join yourself with them. And, and that's what happens. And, and, I'm, and look, I made it so simple for you. I made this so simple for you because it's easy to remember. This is a PB and J every day. It's just a PB&J every day because that's what I eat for lunch every day is, is PB&J or die for me. And so I just made it so simple for you. What are we going to do? We're going to prayer and praise. What are we going to do? We're going to read the Bible in a book. What are we going to do? We're going to join in juke. And so at the end of every day, you can ask yourself, did I PB&J today? Did I have, did, did, not did you have your, your physical PB&J, but did you have your spiritual PB&J today? Did you connect with Jesus through prayer and praise? Did you connect with Jesus through his word or through another book? And did you connect with Jesus because you connected with a, another one of his sons and daughters who are really trying to produce the fruit of the spirit in their own lives as well? You know, I, I think here we are uh, talking about Jesus. Je Jesus was on this earth some 2,000 years ago, and, and here we are. We're going to go back into the life of Jesus. We're going to look into his life. We're going to pull out these nine characteristics, the, the, the fruit of the Spirit. We're going to see these things. We're going to bring them into our current, uh, our current life today. But, you know, as I was thinking, I said, man, this is kind of where it all started. This is where it all started, Genesis chapter 1. Whenever God made man, he created them male and female. And it says in Genesis 1, verse 28, it says, and then God blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply. 
fill the earth and govern it. Now, now we could say when God said be fruitful and multiply, he was talking about having kids and, and absolutely. But I believe that God is always saying more than just what he's saying. There is so much more and so much, it's so much deeper and so much bigger and so much broader that when he says, hey, I want you to be fruitful. I want that to be a characteristic of your life. He said, be fruitful. And then I want you to multiply as well. He says, I want you to fill the earth. But then he says, and I also, I want you to govern it. I want you to subdue it. I want you to take control of it. And this is what I've discovered, is that if we are not fruitful, we can't move into everything that God has for us. If we are not fruitful in our character, if we are not fruitful in the fruit of the Spirit, then we will never be able to do what God is asking us to do. It started all the way in Genesis 1, and God said, I want you to be fruitful. Jesus came and said, I am the vine. You are the branches. If you will connect with me, I will make you fruitful. And whenever you produce this fruit, the world will see, and it will be obvious that you are my disciples, and it will be obvious that you connected into a supernatural force and a supernatural flow that has done extraordinary things in your life. Well, we are closing out all of our sermons this year with a, a lead acrostic because in 2021, in this year of application, we want to lead ourselves well so that we'll have the chance to lead others well. And what does it take to lead yourselves well? Well, you gotta learn, you gotta evaluate, you gotta apply, and then you gotta do it again. So our learn today, our takeaway is simply this. Living like Jesus begins with abiding in Jesus. Living like Jesus, or maybe we could say producing fruit like Jesus, it begins with abiding in Jesus. Our evaluation is how is my daily connection with Christ? How is my daily connection with Christ? I'm not asking you about your confession. I'm not asking you, are you saved? I'm not asking you, have you been born again? Have you been baptized? I'm not asking you today, are you in Christ? Do you believe that you're going to heaven? No, I'm asking you today about your daily connection with Jesus. Did you PB and J today? <laughs> did, did you have your spiritual PB and J? Was there a moment of praise and prayer? Was there a moment that you were in, in, in the word of God, in the Bible? Were you reading a book? Is there a moment where you joined with a, a, another believer, or that you had to put a juke on somebody who was trying to take you somewhere where you did not want to go. The application is simply this. Take time to connect with Jesus every day this week. Simple, just take time. Hey, you don't have to pray for three hours. You can pray for three minutes. You don't have to have uh, 10 songs of worship uh, in order to praise. Your praise can be 30 seconds. But I want you to pray and I want you to praise. I want you to open the Bible. I want you to read God's word. I may, maybe even get this book, go on this journey with us. I want you to join with another believer. I want you to link up with them. I want you to connect with them. And I want you to get ready to juke those people this summer who, who are trying to take you down the roads that you know you don't need to walk down. And then the D is always the same. Hey, just do it again. Just do it again. Just do it again. We just gotta stay connected, stay connected, keep remaining, keep abiding. And if we will do that day after day after day after day, we will see the fruit of the Spirit in our lives. The same thing that we see in the life of Jesus over these next nine weeks will be seen in our lives as well because the same Spirit that was with him is the same Spirit that lives on the inside of us. Come on, can I pray for you today? Father, thank you so much for your word. Thank you for your truth. God, thank you that your truth sets us free. Jesus, thank you that you came to this earth so that we could be in relationship with God, so that we could step from this life into eternity, that we might spend forever in heaven. And maybe you're watching today and you would say, Philip, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not connecting with Jesus today because I've just never connected with him. 
I've, I've never connected with God. I've never invited God to be a part of my life. I've never started this relationship with him. But you say, that's what I need today. I need this fresh start. I need this brand new beginning in my life. I need to connect with God. I need my sins to be forgiven. And I want to spend eternity with God in heaven forever and ever. Or maybe today you're watching and you say, Philip, that is my confession. That is my, that is my belief. I, I, have been, I have been born again. But, but if you were honest, you say, but Philip, I'm not connected today. I'm not connected. I, I'm, not, I'm not in a flourishing, vibrant, authentic, real, powerful relationship with Jesus right now. It's not active. And you say, that's what I want today. Whether, whether this is your very first time or maybe you're just reconnecting with the vine today. And you say, Phil, that's what I need in my life. Come on, right there where you are. Just whisper to God. Say, God, I need that. God, I need that. I need to connect with you today. I need you to forgive my sins. In a moment, we're going to pray. But I just want you just to tell God, God, that's me. That's me. I know. He's talking to me right now. That is what I need. And maybe today you're, you're watching and you say, Philip, I want my life to be fruitful. I want this summer to be fruitful. At the end of this summer, I want to see more love and more joy, more peace. I, I want my kindness to mature and grow. I want my self-control to mature and grow. I want my gentleness to develop. I want, I want the fruit of the Spirit to be more evident in my life than ever before. I want what I see in Jesus to be seen in me. If that's the cry of your heart right now, just say, that's me. Just tell God, that's me. God, that's what I want. Come on, will you pray this simple prayer right after me? Say, dear Heavenly Father, I know that I need you. I need your love and your grace. I need your power and your forgiveness. I want to connect with you. I want to receive the forgiveness of my sins. I want to experience your power in my life. God, I know that you are awesome and you have a plan and you have a purpose for my life. And that plan and that purpose includes me being fruitful. And that's exactly what I want to be. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Hey, come on. I am so glad that you are watching as we kick off this brand new summer series. We're going to be diving in, and we're just going to go week by week. Man, we're going to look at love and joy and peace. And I believe this is going to be a summer of transformation because it's our year of application. So we're going to start putting what we see in Jesus's life in, in operation in our life, and it is going to make a difference. Hey, I can't wait to see you back here next week. God bless you.